Hello, my name is Glenn Spicer. It has been two weeks since I posted online the video entitled, Are We Witnessing the Death of Realfoot Lake? Since that time, almost 10,000 people have viewed it, and it has been forwarded to many government agencies and area politicians. That video has caused quite a buzz in several Tennessee agencies, so I thought it would be appropriate to let you know how our concerns have been addressed and inform you of the answers that we received to our questions. So here they are. Did you get that? If all you heard was silence, then you get the picture. Silence is all we have received. No answers to questions concerning the pumping of water across the street from Realfoot Lake and its apparent consequences to businesses, property, and environment. And we have received no response to the questions concerning permits required by Tennessee law when wells are dug for purposes other than for agricultural use. We have received no response about our concerns about necessary environmental impact studies, which are required when there is a potential impact to the environment by such activities. These appear to be non-existent. As curious as it seems, we have received no information about who actually authorized the drilling of the 20 wells, which have been pumping over 2 billion gallons of water from beneath Realfoot Lake. In fact, until I showed the great amount of water being pumped from the water table, some officials denied it was even happening. And now, they can't deny it, but still, no one is stepping up and taking responsibility for having authorized it. And so it continues today. Meanwhile, we're watching the lake continue to fall. The little rain that we had a few days ago had no measurable effect upon water levels in the Realfoot Lake. Understandably, several resorts are concerned about their businesses as their boats sit in the mud. South Shore Resort, located in Sandburg at the south end of the lake, as seen here, continues to be affected. The boats at Acorn Point Lodge remain many feet from the water's edge as it continues to recede. The Bose Landing Boathouse here shows that there is no chance of getting their boats to the water anytime soon. The TN.gov website states, Persons who wish to make an alteration to a stream, river, lake or wetland must first obtain a water quality permit. Physical alterations to properties of waters of the state require an aquatic resource alteration permit, ARAP, or a 401 water quality certification. Examples of stream alterations that require a permit from the Tennessee Division of Water Pollution Control include dredging, excavation, channel widening, or straightening, bank sloping, stabilization, channel relocation, water diversions or withdrawals, dams, weirs, dikes, levees, or other similar structures, flooding, excavating, draining and or filling a wetland, road and utility crossings, structural fill. Yet no such permits have been reported issued which would allow the pumping that is being done at the Realfoot Lake Spillway site. So what are area residents to conclude from the silence and lack of answers? On the surface, it seems that one of Tennessee's historic landmarks is being environmentally impacted, and no one in authority seems to care. If you or I wanted to dig a well so close to Realfoot Lake, even if it was on our own property, and we did so without a permit, we would see just how swift the government can be to get us shut down. Yet when the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Corps of Engineers are doing it, it is denied, covered up, or simply ignored. I'm standing now beside one of the wells at the spillway project. Someone authorized their use, but after weeks of phone calls to government officials, hundreds of pamphlets passed out, and thousands of viewers of the online expose, no one is claiming responsibility, and no permits for them have been presented. If you're wondering who are the people who have been made aware of this problem, here are some of their names. The Tennessee Water Quality Control Board was told firsthand during an open mic meeting in Nashville the day after the first video was posted. What was their response to several pages of information presented to them? More silence. 
and when asked if there were any questions or if any clarification was needed concerning the presented material, not a single question was asked. This leads one to assume that they understood what was being said, but simply did not care. Paul Davis and Robert Baker of the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation were asked about the permits that Tennessee requires before drilling of wells can be done, and they have yet to state that they were ever issued. Dan Eager of TDEC was also informed of the pumping. Randy Cook of the Real Foot National Wildlife Refuge has also been made aware, and although he promised a week ago to get some answers to us, that was the last we heard of him. State Representative Judy Barker was also made aware of the resident concerns, and the input of an expert was promised. We're still waiting for that expert to appear. TDEX Division of Water Supply is responsible for the enforcement of such statutes as the Safe Dam Act, Water Wells Act, Water Withdrawal Registration Act. Again, we have received no response from this agency either. Today is October 31st, 2010. The images I'll show you next show you that the pumps are still pumping and the volume of water that's being removed from Realfoot Lake. The meters I showed you show that even though the water being removed from the water table beneath Real Foot Lake has lessened, it's still pumping about 12,000 gallons a minute. So as you can see, water continues to be pumped away from Real Foot Lake, as it has for months now. We wait for answers. We watch the water level continue to fall. The concerns for businesses continue to grow. The foundation of homes continue to crack. Thousands of dollars in revenue is being lost by area resorts and businesses, and the silence coming from government officials is deafening. Perhaps the pumps will be turned off around Thanksgiving, as the rumor is, though no official word has been presented. And perhaps we'll have a very wet winter, and the water level in Realfoot Lake will return to normal. Perhaps all this concern will be alleviated, but that's yet to be seen. Meanwhile, the concerns persist as the water level continues to fall to the lowest point in 25 years. We've had dry summers before, but nature alone has never brought us to this point. So as we worry and watch, our concerns are met with silence, a silence that is only broken by the rushing water being taken away from beneath Realfoot Lake. Some say it has little effect on the lake's water levels. Some say it might have a minor effect, but they can't be sure. And though air residents all seem to have their own opinions, no state official has rushed forward with the proof to declare that this pumping is not contributing to the low water levels of Riffwood Lake. So for now, our questions remain unanswered, and our concerns seem to be of little importance to the powers that be. But question we will. Voice our concerns we must. And expose what we see with our own eyes we will continue to do. But one thing is certain, this situation does not show any signs of reversing itself anytime soon. And the future of Realfoot Lake and the survival of the area businesses remains uncertain.